Welcome to our celebration of Palm Sunday and the reading of the Passion Narrative. This week we haven't printed the Bible readings in their entirety, partly because they are so long and in the hope that you will find joy in opening your Bible and entering into the readings for yourself. If that's going to be difficult, might I suggest this website, BibleGateway.com where you can search for the readings and choose your preferred translation. The one used in church is the new revised standard version. You could also contact your care group leader or me, and we'd be only too happy to help you. Lent is fast coming to a close. Liturgically, Lent ends as, church, as the church celebrates Holy Communion on Maundy Thursday. As Holy Week begins, I plan to ritually wash my feet on Thursday evening, pray at the cross on Good Friday, and spend time in silence on Holy Saturday. Behind me are palm branches, cut from the trees at the Palm Lakes Resort. This week I spent a pleasant hour or so making palm crosses, I hope you can get one as a reminder of this holiest of weeks. We hold our palms as did the people of Jerusalem who welcomed Jesus and tore palm branches off the trees to throw down into the path of the donkey that he was riding. These days we might roll out the red carpet for the queen as she enters our city. This is no trivial act. The red carpet is not, as pop culture would have us believe, the place of haute couture and the paparazzi. The red carpet and the palms are a sign of honour paid to our king. As we walk in procession, we sing Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Today, I'm wearing a red stole. Red is the colour for Passion Sunday. This fiery red stands for, for passion, for blood, for fervour. It is the colour of martyrdom and sacrifice. Our reading for the Passion narrative is in preparation for all that will unfold this Holy Week. Jesus' last meal with his disciples his arrest, trial and crucifixion, his descent into hell and on the third day, his glorious resurrection. It can be hard for us to go through the trials, bitterness and despair of Holy Week. We prefer to go straight to the resurrection and skip all that pain. I've always found the passion very moving even disturbing as I join the crowd saying, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Our Lenten study on the Psalms is in this final week as we read Psalm 31. Bishop David takes as his theme, religious persecution. The set reading only gives us the middle verses 9 to 18 of Psalm 31. Let me encourage you to look at the whole psalm. The first section is a plea, a call to God in our distress. Then we read verses 9 to 18, a powerful lament that seems in our Christian imagination to be the prayer of Jesus as he stands silently before his accusers and even as he waits for death on the cross. Then the final section contains praise and thanksgiving for God's goodness and steadfast love. As we try to make sense of all that is going on for us in these days, when we cannot go outside, when we cannot see our friends and our family, when the great festival of the church is celebrated in such a different and even uncomfortable way. 
we too want to cry out to God. We are looking for refuge, for a rock of refuge. The theme of refuge appears repeatedly in Psalm 31. God is our rock, our refuge, our fortress, our rescuer, our guide, and our redeemer. Verse 21 of Psalm 31 refers to a city under siege. My th thoughts immediately went to our current situation. A siege is when we are cut off by a hostile force, in this case the coronavirus. Some have likened this to a war, a world war against a global pandemic. The psalm concludes with what I think is the most useful and comforting words for us at this moment. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you that hope in the Lord. Might I suggest that you could copy down these words and place them in a prominent place in your home, maybe on the fridge, at the breakfast table or wherever it is that you have chosen to say your prayers and read your Bible. You might like to join me in praying with these words during Holy Week. In God's steadfast love, in God's strength and particularly in God's mighty act of redemption we find all our hope. No matter what this life may bring, we place our trust in the resurrected King. Nothing is more important to us in these difficult times than to know God's kindness and love for us, a love most fully expressed in his Son, Jesus.